Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited because I met Sinehan Gandhi White maybe like two or three weeks ago now. Yeah. It was a morning there. It was like there were so many people on the screen. And I said to each and every one of these most amazing women, there's not enough time. You each have to come back. And I'm so excited because you all took me up on the offer. You're the first to come back. So thank you. And tomorrow I have someone else. But mm-hmm. we're going to get to how we how you were all on this screen together. Right. Um, but let's um, let's talk about just you, not the group, um, sure. for a minute. Um, I got as we said, I got you up nice and early because you're in the Bay Area, and I love this is one of the most fun things about you know these morning talks that I do is people really are from all over, mm-hmm. um, and so. Um, you are coming live this morning from the Bay Area of California. We're probably having the same kind of misty morning. Um, <laughs> you never know what the wedding, uh, the weather is going to be. But right. there, but you're the daughter of Indian um, immigrants. You experienced a lot of things growing up, and um, talk to me a little bit about who you are and and what sort of brings you to this moment. Of course, of course. Well, I am a girl who really grew up learning how to navigate, um, you know, the American society and finding a balance between that and being Indian, right? Because though I was born and raised here, uh, it was only myself and my cousins, our parents, everyone else, they were born and raised in India. So it was a very different kind of book, best of both worlds, if you will. And uh, there were a lot of really challenging moments. And for myself, I was very shy. Um, School was not my favorite place to be, which I know is ironic considering the work that I do now. But Mm -hmm. um, I really, I struggled to find my place and to find my voice for a very, very long time. And I lived kind of, uh, in order to belong, I lived to please others. And I did it, uh, you know, in a number of different ways as I grew up. And I became very strong, very independent. I you know, went to school, I got my undergrad degree, I got my master's degree, I got married, I did all of these amazing things. But um, just my desire to please others and make them happy came at the expense of me. And it came to a head last year, actually, just before COVID became this global pandemic. And I just, um, I found myself really quite miserable uh, in my job, in, uh, just in, in life in general, I just felt like I wasn't where I should be or where I wanted to be. And I didn't know how to communicate that with the world, let alone with my spouse. So what happened is, uh, thankfully a catalyst, um, took place in, uh, my workplace. And there was just a disagreement that I had, um, you know, with, with a colleague and it turned out to be the blessing that I needed because it pushed me to realize that I was worth more than this position and that this was not my forever home. And it had given me many blessings over the years, but now was my time to say goodbye. And I did so gracefully without any animosity. I remember sending um, an email to my boss and I said, you know, it's time for me to move on. And after doing that, uh, I had one of my best friends. She helped me, uh, get ready and pack up my things. And we, you know, shipped out, as you said, into the next chapter of my life. And I went home and I let my, um, I let my husband know, I'm like, I'm, I I can't do this anymore. And he and I had a really hard, you know, heart to heart because now COVID was becoming a thing and we could no longer, um, live this life where, you know, bills and things were coming up. It was, it was tricky for everyone, right? We were Mm -hmm. thinking, where's the money going to come from? What's going on? So thankfully we are very close to both sides of our family. Um, and his parents, uh, offered, um, and said, you know, you can come and stay with us if you would like. And we said, okay, that's going to be hard because he and I have only ever lived with one another for 
basically our adult lives. We haven't lived with anyone else right. uh, in college. So we said, okay, that'll be an adjustment. But, uh, you know, we did. And it, it was, um, it wasn't always easy because again, when you live with other people, different personalities, sure. but we came to really love and appreciate it because it, it gave us the time that we needed to regroup. And that's where I, I say in the book is where I really discovered myself and I went into a cocoon and then I came out as a butterfly. And thankfully mm -hmm. my family allowed me to do that, right? So I was able to discover myself. I actually pulled back from social media. I pulled back from everything that I felt was played a toxic role in who I had become. And I was just angry and I was sad and I was full of so much pain because of what had happened to me. And, you know, that disagreement, which is a mild way of putting it, but I am so thankful because it pushed me to realize that I need to demand more of myself. I need to learn how to advocate for myself. I need to decide what it is that I want for Sneha. So what I did is I said goodbye to that woman. And then I got to know myself again. I got reacquainted with the woman, the girl who lives inside me. And we all have that girl. We all have that mm -hmm. little boy. And I talked to her and we decided together that I was going to get my business set up and I was only going to do things that aligned with my mission. So what I did is in order to stay in the game of education is I worked with um, AmeriCorps and I served my full academic year, which just finished. And during that time, I also um, decided to, you know, uh, write this book with these amazing ladies who you met some yeah. of last time. And uh, that was the catalyst that I needed to really step into my own power and realize that I have a voice, I have a platform, people want to see my empowered story so that I can empower them as well. And I decided if I can do it for myself, which I've been doing it my whole life, I would be honored to continue my work with, you know, with the little girl who lives inside every woman and with the little girls who are little girls right now, because I want to help them navigate and find their voice before they find themselves in a situation like I and countless other women have when we are in our late twenties or thirties or forties, we want them to learn about who they are in a better and more health and a much healthier way. Um, do, you, do you think that when you look back in hindsight, do you think that you were doing something wrong with your voice though? I mean, it sounds like that you were a very independent and strong person. So do you feel that you just weren't being heard properly or were you not communicating in a way? Because sometimes, it, it, sometimes it's a little of both. Yeah. But, you know, and, and you have to, I, I know recently I had to apologize for how I was communicating to someone Absolutely. Um, based on some stress, right. um, but I was like, I need to get it. I need to get, you know, right. but it, it makes it so people won't hear you either. Yeah. Right, right. I think, um, yes, absolutely. It had everything to do with how I was presenting myself, right? Because I was presenting myself as I can do it all, right? I was misindependent. But, you know, whenever people said, hey, can you do this? My first instinct was yes. I very rarely said no. And that's one thing that I work, I have worked with, with myself to set boundaries and say, you know, if that's something that I really don't want to do, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to say no without regret. And those that love me and understand me, they will come to support me at some mm -hmm. point. And that's something that I had to learn. So yes, you are absolutely right. I was always very strong-willed. I was always very independent. And in many ways, I did live my life the way that I wanted to, or the way that I thought I wanted to. But I came to realize that I needed to communicate with myself a little bit differently. I needed to find my role um, in the world in a way that really matched who I am because I am someone who likes to make people happy. I am someone who will always say that I'm an educator and I love educating our young people, but I don't care for the education system because there are so many gaps and I just could no longer 
serve in a space where I felt like I wasn't able to fully have control or freedom over my choices and my actions. So I said, you know, um, I'm not being valued here and it, it's time for me to say goodbye. And we, we've all done that, right? We take a, we hold a space that feels comfortable to us because that's what we knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew that space. I knew what I could do. I knew what I was capable of. But I was forced to realize uh, through a number of different instances that it was no longer meant for me. It was no longer serving me. And that was okay. It had served me. And it, it made me an incredible person. It made me a much stronger educator, a much stronger woman. And I will always be thankful for it. Mm -hmm. However, now going forward, I am going to take on the world in a very different way. And my work is to empower and my work is to coach teachers and my work is to coach young people so that they feel confident, right? And one thing that I realized because people will say, how come women and children? Because in every woman lies a little girl. Yes. And every little girl will one day grow up into a woman. And so we need to be there to support both parties because both matter. You were a little girl once. I mm -hmm. was a little girl once. Your mm -hmm. daughter was a little girl once. And look at how we have all served ourselves to get us to this point, to get us to today. So t tell me, you know, you're, you have um, the branding of Empower You, which I love. And it was, you know, so much, um, I, I do want to get to um, the book as well. But um, you come to the book, which which is Women Who Boss Up, which I love, but you brought to that book, Empower You. What is Empower You? Who, you know, what's behind it? What are you teaching? Absolutely. So I teach women how to get reacquainted with their inner superhero, that little girl that lives inside them. And I tell them, you know, she knows exactly who you should be. She is the person that you need to communicate with first and foremost, and she will guide you to the person that you are meant to be. And it sounds a little silly, but it's really about trusting yourself, trusting your gut instinct, and understanding that, understanding that you matter that you need to learn how to prioritize yourself without feeling guilty. We as women have culturally and systemically and societally have always told ourselves, in fact, my, uh, one of my girlfriends, she mentioned this yesterday, that we are life uh, givers. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it was- it's, I always, you were saying something earlier and I was thinking about this, that, you know, men don't apologize for these kinds of things exactly. and, um, I, and and I'm always careful about this, but we don't necessarily, you know, when, when little boys are shy, they're just shy, you know, we, we definitely handle. We, we handle girls differently. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. From a very young age, we teach them, you know, be delicate, be gentle. Don't mm -hmm. be bossy. Don't be forceful. I myself was told, mm -hmm. yeah, don't be bossy. Don't be this. Don't be too assertive. And now the branding has shifted. Now mm -hmm. we're telling girls, if you're bossy, if you're assertive, it's a good thing. You take charge. And those that appreciate you, they will follow you. They will join you on your journey. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what I tell my clients is learn how to step into both roles. There is a moment to assert yourself. There is a moment to advocate for yourself. And there's a moment to sit on the sidelines and just observe. But there is no rule or law that says that you need to fit into a box and just be a demure, good, you know, society serving woman. That There is no law that says that. And what's, I guess like sometimes I think that people might listen to this conversation and say, okay, I'm ready. But what is that actual process? You know, you know, what's, I always like the call to action kind of component, um, you know, is it pick up the phone and call you? Is it, you know, what's, what's the process of working with you and saying, I'm ready? Absolutely. So the process of working with me and saying that I'm ready is saying, you know, are you a woman who is ready 
to boss up? Are you a woman who is ready to channel their inner superwoman and say, I am going to live life on my terms and for myself and myself alone, not for anyone else. And if I am ready to pursue that life, no matter what the consequences, let's start talking. Because I promise you, it will be worth the risk of serving yourself for the first time in your life versus serving everyone else at the consequence of being unhappy, of mm -hmm. living a life where you're putting on a facade of a smile, but internally you're thinking, I would rather be doing something different. I mean, how many of us had a little dream when we were a kid and we said, I want to be this. Mm -hmm. And how many of us are doing that one thing? And when we're little, some people say, oh, that's silly. That's cute, honey. That's adorable. And they say, oh, you do what you want to do. But then when you're an adult, at some point, you think I have to be practical. I have to think about how I can pay the bills. And I have to think about what society is going to think. And we take in all of this and we filter yeah. it and we categorize it. And then we go, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But is that really your dream life? Is that really your ideal? And your dream, I'm here to tell you, can be a reality. It's just about how you approach it. It's just about how I, you do it. I really just so appreciate that and admire that in putting that into the reality of working with people. Because, you know, I think the reality becomes really clear when a tragedy happens. And I always think, don't wait for that tragedy to happen. But, you know, you have one life to li live. Agreed. And, and that is the reality. You get up every day. And I always, you know, try and even say to my kids, not every day is going to be great. But you have to love what you do. And you have to love who you're spending your time with. And if you don't, then you really got to look at what you're doing and look at who you're surrounding yourself with. And if you're not doing that or, or taking shape of that on a daily basis, then you're really kind of wasting that day and you don't get that day back. No, no, I, I could not agree more. And I'm so glad that you tell your kids that because it's so important to learn what aligns with you and your heart and what does not. And that's something that we, we all have, right? We have that gut, we have that gut instinct. When we do something that does not suit us, we get that little cringe in our stomach. We get that little, oh, but I'd rather not. And it's really about trusting that. Yeah. And it's really I, about- it, It's, it's gotta be, you know, I, my husband, when he first met me, mm -hmm. I, he, he'll always love that I just shared it, but we, you know, we've been married almost 30 years, but- well, he can't believe like that I can make life decisions <laughs> in seconds by my gut. Right. And right. I'll never forget, like I, I took a job and I'm like, yeah, this is great. I'm going to go work and do this. And I think, you know, maybe I was a day in and I'm like, I got to quit. And he was like, what, what are you doing? Like, I'm like, my, my, it, just my insides were turned upside down. Like it was wrong. Like everything about it wasn't, I don't know what I was thinking. And, and from a professional standpoint, I believe me, I should have thought about all those things beforehand. And I'm sure like I probably did, but it took, you know, it took, a, it clicked in 24 hours after really living it. And I, and I called the person, I'm like, and I know it was unprofessional in that moment in time, but I can't tell you the, phew, like, I, I was like, too bad. I, I, I don't care. You know, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna live for the minute of that unprofessional moment. And, but, you know, I cannot believe the look on my husband's face. He was like, I've never seen anything like, like you took the job, you, you got rid of the job. I'm like, yep. Right. Right. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. My husband did the same thing and, um, I responded the way that he responded to you. Uh, but then I also thought initially, you know, internally, but then I thought, you know, if that's the best fit for him and he knows where he feels comfortable and where he feels good, I'm pretty proud of him for doing that because I would have been like, I'll stick it out for a little while. I'll be miserable. Huh. And 
then I'll look for another opportunity and then I'll leave. But what you did was so powerful because you stepped into your power. You knew this is not a good fit for me and it's not worth the mental, emotional, right. and spiritual sacrifice that this will take from me. And I refuse, I refuse to give that up. That's mine. I, I will say after almost 30 years of marriage, my husband lives a little more with his gut, just a little bit. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a personality trait you have or you don't have, but you know, but you know, I, I definitely, you know, kind of when I meet someone or I'm working on something, I, I can get that sense or that, that feeling. Um, but um, I, th I think you have to really listen to your inner, I think you have to listen to your inner voice and with that being said, um, and I'm sure this is part of what you talk to your clients about, that inner voice is very powerful. So, you know, there are times where I, you've got to be careful with that inner voice because that inner voice can lead you, you know, you got to pull it back too. Agreed. And, Agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah. Go, I was going to say, um, I definitely want to leave some time to talk about um, these amazing women that you, oh, please, please. Yeah, that you've been working with. Um, you know, um, you are part of a book. Oh, you're part of two books though, aren't you? I, so I actually, I, um, uh, so Tam and I had spoken about the Asian woman book. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, and then she and I, after many conversations, we decided we're like, not just the Asian book, but there should be a woman of color book. Mm -hmm. So we made that a women, you know, an international women of color book. So she and I conceptualized the idea together, but uh, the Asian woman book, I just, I, I initially, I was a part of it. And then I had a one-on-one -on -one with her and I said, you know, the way that I live my life, it's not just as an Asian woman, I see myself as so much more, mm -hmm. you know, just in every facet of my life from mm -hmm. um, my choice of partner, uh, from the, the students that I work with every day to my closest and dearest friends. I said, you know, this just doesn't fully align with me. So then we created this other book because we decided that there must be other women just like me. Yeah. So that's exactly what we did. And that's exactly what we found. We found an amazing array of women you know, a spectrum globally who all had a very similar feeling mm -hmm. of uh, being people of color, but not being able to fit into a box. And it was an amazing, amazing thing. Well, I think that's what attracted me so much um, to all of you um, was your energy, your sisterhood, um, your, your connectedness of sharing your your power of helping one another um you came together you wrote a book you're, right. you're sharing it um you know i am not a woman of color by any means as i said in the interview but right. what i what i love is that you have to take that in and there's something i don't care who you are something to learn from it and i think that's the growth and um which is you know why i wanted all of you together on my platform, why I wanted, why I'm having you all on separately, because I think that's where the conversation lives and breathes and, you know, and goes on because the fact that you came together and said, you know, this is what we need is super important because I think it shows little girls, um, you can be different. Yes. You should be different. Yes. And, and then, you know, how to use your power. Love but it. But I also think it doesn't matter who you are. This is, you know, I think lots of women of every color, um, ethnicity, you know, I as I said to you all, Jewish women have, you know, there, there could be the Jewish women, the Asian women, the, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, you, you put a group of women in a room and you all go, oh my God, I have that issue. Oh yeah, <laughs> and oh yeah. So, but I, you know, it was one of the reasons I just, but I, I adored, I adored you all. How is the book doing? It's called Women Who Boss Up. Yes. Um, and 
International Women of Color. <laughs> definitely go to Amazon. It's a holiday weekend, people. Like, grab oh. it now. It will be at your house. Um, uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can always reach us, reach out to us individually if you would like a personalized copy. Yeah. Uh, hard copies um, should be in our hands. Uh, the end of July, um, early August is what we're expecting. Yeah. Once we grab those, we plan to be, uh, well, each and every one of us are going to be shipping those out. So uh, grab we need you guys, on. we need you guys on a book tour, hopefully. Oh, like. yes. I know, I know, I know. We, um, We've talked about so many different upcoming projects. Uh, Tam has discussed so many things, but she's already getting ready for the next book. So, you know, <laughs> anything is possible. We are. Oh my God. I, I can only imagine. I, you know, one fun thing I learned from you all is that you're up early texting one another, which oh, yeah. I love. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, it's, it's really the, the greatest thing that I saw from you all is that, that power of, supporting one another, yes. which I think is just incredible in the workforce. Women need that. Um, I, I, you know, look, this is what I said. I think men need that. Yes. The funny thing is that I think men need that more as much as women need it. I think men need it. Like I'll say to my <laughs> husband all the time, I'm like, you guys need what women have, or, you know, or yeah. I'll say like, can't you think like a woman? Right. But, right. Um, so I think that women are smart in that regard. And you guys are, have really, really put it together. Um, how do people find you individually? What's the best website to find you? Absolutely. So my website is ariseview.com. That's A-R-I-S-E. Uh, you.com but uh, for my daily updates and daily interactions you can come find me on Facebook Sneha Gandhi White and on Instagram under empower you under uh, hyphenated lower hyphenated uh, agency so okay. uh, underscore so I and just so you know I have the website under um, in this link today so definitely start there to get all the information you know you have a a free ticket back here anytime to keep me updated on anything you're doing, new books, um, open invitation always to come oh, back. Thank you, thank you, sorry. I mean, it's uh, it's been incredible. I actually have uh, I have a few few ideas for us, so I'll definitely Good. out, but it's been, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Thank you so much for having me. And, you know, thank you to Carmel. Um, I she, know. She was on my show last night and she's- She she's did? Oh, there. she is so, she's so fun. Such a ball yeah. of energy. I, you know, all of you women bring something so special together. So I just, it's going to be fun to watch all the different things that you all do together and individually. And, you know, it is, this is an open- an, an open space for you to always come and share what you're doing. Um, and um, I definitely have women that I also want to share on your platform. So anytime. Well, you know what? I actually have, um, you know, if they would like to do a live with me or they would like to be on my podcast, uh, just just let me know because I, I will. <laughs> have ideas for us. So I, I'm glad. I'm glad. Good. All right. Well, have a great week, a great holiday weekend, and we will definitely talk soon. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Soon. Bye.